An early 2020, misunderstood dreamer and professed flat earther, Mad Mike Hughes, climbed into his homemade rocket and blasted into the Californian sky. But even with years of planning and two successful launches under his belt, things didn't go to plan. Within seconds he was dead and his once impressive flying machine lay in ruins on the desert floor. And while his death made world headlines, some of his closest friends and associates revealed he may have never been a flat earther in the first place. Rather, he had used the controversial topic for personal gain. This is the story of Mad Mike Hughes and his homemade rocket. The world is a different shape than what we were taught in those uh, programming centers, which is called public school system. Now the edge, which keeps all the oceans in, is a 150 foot ice wall, which is Antarctica. Now yesterday, the sun and the moon was in the sky here at the same time, which is not possible in my belief, when it glows. Mike Hughes was born in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, on February 9th, 1956. Intrigued by airplanes, fast cars, and motorcycles, like many boys of his era, he was fascinated with American daredevil, Evil Knievel. As an adult, Mike made a living as a limousine driver and a part-time stuntman, but he dreamed of breaking one of Knievel's long-standing records, so he did. In 2002, he bested his childhood hero by jumping a three and a half ton limousine more than a hundred feet between two ramps at a Riverside Speedway in California. Now with a world record, he set his sights on an even more exhilarating, outrageous and potentially deadly endeavor, rocketry. Mike and fellow speed aficionado Waldo Stakes initially dreamed of building a manned, two-stage rocket they called a raccoon, because it was part rocket and part balloon. They envisioned a machine capable of reaching a top speed of 500 miles or 800 kilometers per hour and carrying him more than 300,000 feet to the edge of space. However, they needed a simpler, cheaper and more practical rocket first to get him off the ground and prove their plan had merit. In January 2014, it was Mike's first flight, when he and his steam-powered homemade rocket climbed 1,500 feet into the Arizona sky. The flight lasted less than a minute, and after touching down he collapsed and spent the next two weeks recovering from a back injury. However, the flight was controversial due to no footage of him having entered or exited the rocket, and some skeptics even claimed the flight was a hoax. Nonetheless, Mike and Waldo got to work on a better and even more powerful rocket. Unfortunately, rockets aren't cheap and money was always a problem, and despite several fundraisers, most generated just a few hundred dollars. I'm not to that point yet where it's a $2 million venture to get me to space. How much have you raised so far? I think I got about $87 in my pocket. So it's going a little slow. In 2016, Mad Mike Hughes, as he was fondly known, began professing his belief that the Earth was flat and not a sphere as everyone thought. He also claimed that with enough money and a powerful enough rocket, he could launch himself to the edge of space, snap some pics, and prove to the world that the Earth was flat. In the 2017 documentary, Rocket Man, Mad Mike's mission to prove the flat Earth, Mike said he wasn't about to take NASA or Elon Musk's word that the world was round. Mike's second rocket flight was scheduled for late November 2017, launching from public property deep within the California desert. He claimed to have all the required permits and permissions from the Bureau of Land Management or BLM for short, and the Federal Aviation Administration. However, a BLM representative said that nobody there had ever spoken to him. To avoid additional miscommunications and delays, the flight was rescheduled for December, and to avoid the red tape, the launch would take place on private property. But the BLM maintained that he still needed permits. True to form, Mike replied, I'm a daredevil, I'm not much for authority or rules. However, 
The launch was ultimately rescheduled for February 3rd, 2018, but a last-minute engine malfunction resulted in yet another maddening delay. On the 24th of March, 2018, Mad Mike Hughes finally accelerated to approximately 350 miles or 563 kilometers per hour as he blasted to an altitude of 2,000 feet. After a hair-raising but relatively uneventful flight, he landed with a resounding thud in the Mojave Desert. He would later tell an Associated Press reporter that rocketry was scary as hell. Then perhaps prophetically he added, but none of us are getting out of this world alive. Over the following two years, and with the help of ample donations from their fellow Flat Earth enthusiasts, Mike and his team planned and began building the perfect rocket. Any modifications to the rocket? How different is the next rocket going to be? Will it be bigger? You no, know, keep asking me to keep getting bigger. I don't know. I'm not going to answer that question anymore. Okay. <laughs> Probably will be. Mike, you probably think I'm going to help you with your rocket. On Saturday, the 22nd of February, 2020, more than four dozen friends, journalists, and fellow rocket lovers watched Mike climb into his sleek, steam-powered rocket pointed toward the heavens. Minutes later, the engine hissed, the craft shuttered, and man and machine began inching toward the sky. As the rocket began to climb, it brushed against a ladder on the launch pad, altering its course and causing the drogue parachute to deploy early. As it flapped violently against the thrust of the engine, it eventually tore from the rocket. With the rocket now wobbling, it carved a wide arc through the sky, turned 180 degrees, and slammed into the desert floor less than a mile away. Sadly, 64-year-old Mad Mike Hughes, stuntman and often misunderstood hopeless dreamer, did not survive the accident. This planet is. I believe it's stationary, motionless, and I believe it is uh, flat. I believe you don't believe that, and you just want a free trip to space. A lot of people think that, you know. Uh huh. But I believe in my first wife also, so I don't know. If I had her Everyone knew Mike was a diehard adventurer and a passionate rocketeer with a zest for life. But he was probably smarter than he was given credit for, and a master of self promotion. But was he really a flat earther? or a guy who would say what he had to in order to fund his passion. According to PR man Darren Schuster, it was definitely the latter. According to Schuster, the flat earth thing had been a publicity stunt for the financial support they hoped it would gain. Freelance journalist Justin Chapman, who had witnessed Mike's final flight, agreed, saying the flat earth thing had been a short-term stunt aimed at raising funds to build the rocket. On a more personal note, he added that Mike was driven by an innate need to do extraordinary things and to inspire others to do the same. On the other hand, a documentarian, Michael Lynn, who chronicled Michael's life and rocket flights, claimed his belief in the flat earth theory seemed genuine. However, according to Mike's friends, he had a deep love for humanity and was far more grounded and introspect than the image he portrayed in public. In the end, Mike never felt his achievements got the attention they deserved, and for a man of vision and action, this may have been a far worse fate than physical death. <laughs>